<laughs> Gotta get that Twinkie. Yeah. Gotta get that Twinkie, man. Did I say Twinkie? Did I say that? You said Twinkie. No, I did not. You, that, that's AI. You put a different word in there. No, it was your voice. It was close enough. <laughs> no, we did a survey. It, it, based on what you said, 70% of what you said was really produced by AI. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. And AI told you that, right? No, right and, and AI told me that, right? But just, did I tell you I was uh, interviewed by an AI bot for a podcast? Wow. What was that like? It was interesting. Wait, hold on. We got Neil deGrasse oh, sorry, Tyson sorry. in the building. Busted in building, Didn't man. even have introductions yet. Yeah, yeah, man. He's so... Go ahead. So what happened? Wait, wait. Do, do people know that we're in a hundred square foot room with nine people? <laughs> <laughs> How you pack this many people in this room? This is a uh, light. This is actually a light day. This is a light this day. This is a light day, yeah. man. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Man. I like saying your whole name. It's powerful. You have to. That's it. Neil right? deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, there you go, no, man. No. <laughs> I love it, man. How y'all doing? Good to see uh, you the, all the, again. Neil deGrasse Tyson is here. He got a new book to infinity and beyond, which is out now. Right? And it's out. Yeah, it was a New York Times bestseller. It debuted at number four on the New York Times bestseller. Oh. Yeah, best-selling author, man. And, uh, Come okay on, man. Now. Um, I like that. <laughs> I love it. Flex on them, Neil. Oh, I'm just saying. I, you know. So, how would you describe synchronicity? Synchronicity. Yeah. That's like an Earth. I mean, but by the way, nothing is synchronous in the universe. Okay. Because relativity prevents that. Break that down. Okay. What two thing? Two events that you experience simultaneously to another person who is moving. And they don't even have to know that they're moving. Those two events are not synchronous. Right. So one will happen before the other, and you can construct it so that the reverse of that happens. So simultaneity is not a thing in in the universe. So I'm using the word simultaneity. Synchronicity. Two things can happen in synchronously, sure. But the way people, the New Age movement has been using it, I'm I'm I don't know. I can't. No. This just sounds so like it's so much like it, people are getting pieces of bits of information and becoming experts. Well, well, well so this is I, I, I what I said and I had a I had a uh, a, a video for um, what are them people called mm. uh, uh, podcast. No, oh, no, 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 no. It was where you give a whole thing. Tech talk. Uh, Tech talk. No, no. Alexa. No, close, close. <laughs> the hell you do? We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Masterclass. Uh, only fans. Only, only fans. No, 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 not only. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> Ah, 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 ah. I hate you. You pay for OnlyFans and you get a little bit of extra mind talk, right? right. <laughs> Let's strip the mind. Of the... So, now, the master class, I, I made a point in the, in the, it's in the trailer for it. I say, one of the great challenges we face is knowing enough about a subject to think you're right, mm. but not enough about the subject to know you're wrong. Oh, Ooh. that was deep. So many people are in this little valley. Uh -huh. They do a couple hours of research on YouTube and they'll come out thinking like they're experts. And then an expert actually says they're wrong and they can't, they can't relate to that. They can't relate to that. Right, right. Uh, no, no, by the way, as an educator, I like the idea that people like feeling like they're experts. Uh -huh. That's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. It means you want to know, believe you know something. And so I don't want to fault people for the feeling that they have when they know a little bit of something. But they've got to be humble enough to recognize that whatever you know, it might not be as much as you could know. Mm. Okay, but yeah. man, here we go, Ben. Uh, Neil okay. deGrasse Tyson. So, so, so can I give an example? Yes. I'm going to give an example. And it involves wormholes. Uh, maybe okay. we're. Because I'm going to ask you about wormholes. Are we getting a little early? Is this too early for no. wormholes? No, okay. no. going to wormholes. Oh, I, I, okay. Okay. okay, I don't want to take it. No, too no, no. Early. Let's slip and slide. Go okay. down. Okay. So I was once at North Carolina's um, Charlotte Airport. Yeah. Okay. Big airport. And I had to go from a big plane to a little plane. And I swear I walked like three miles inside. It was probably only a mile, but it felt like three miles. And and my luggage didn't have wheels. It was like one of these garment bags uh, in my, oh my backpack. God. And I was like, what? What? And I finally get to my <laughs> destination. <laughs> and then I thought I'd be clever. Mm -hmm. And so I tweeted back when it was called Twitter. Uh, I tweeted, this is my geek tweet. I said, can't wait till we have wormholes, then all gates will be adjacent to one another. Mm. Okay. And I thought I'm proud of myself for that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. pretty good one, that's right? That's a good one. What happened? Well, <laughs> well <laughs> he knows. <laughs> so however geeky you are, 
you must recognize that the geek spectrum is infinite. There's always someone geekier than you. So someone in the <laughs> comment thread wrote, Dr. Tyson, the day we have wormholes, you won't need airports. Oh! One of your students? It was like a so, battle. Like geeks. Ah, that's, that was a, like that geek was a geek battle. I'll cage you. match, and I lost that one. He out geek you. I, um, I, I, I'll geek. Uh, so listen, this is an incredible book. Um, just to sit and just disappear in this. Book. Oh, thank you for that because that yeah. is the the goal. Yo, I, right. and it's so it's so you the way it's written, it's, right? It's it's and plus it's a beautiful book. It's co-produced with National Geographic. Yes. Oh, you got Gorgeous. a camera? You got the camera, the camera on this? Yeah, uh, National. Man. Too bad for all y'all just listening to this. Yeah. But it's a really beautiful book. Uh, and it's co-produced with National Geographic, so you know awesome. they, they don't make ugly books. You know, no. this. <laughs> um, it's fully illustrated, and I think it's a fun read to get to get absorbed into. Absolutely, and one of the things. Plus, you, you know do... what they did? They they gave me a necktie that has this pattern on it. Oh wow! Oh, oh, man. You coordinated oh. with your butt. Oh, I was going to wear it in here, but I was certain no one has ever worn a necktie into this <laughs> recording studio oh, before. Man. Way to marginalize us. Uh, uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Doc. Why okay. you Who was the last person who wore a tie? Him. Mike Muse. Mike Muse. Yeah, Mike. That, was okay. the other day. that was Monday. He works with, <laughs> right. with Monday. Good morning, America. <laughs> okay. That was my. Yep. Uh, BB, go ahead, jump yeah. in me. So I've, I've been thinking oh, of. What like I was going to say was, if I wear the tie, what I want to do is wear it on like a red carpet. <laughs> and you know, on the red carpet, they ask you, who are you wearing? And I say, I'm wearing my own book, bitch. You bitch. Know? Oh, 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 bitch. Oh. You gotta end it like that. Oh. Oh. You better make that a clip, Drew. Uh, no, no. <laughs> no. I, Neil, I, I've been, uh, but yeah. I've been, I've been doing my, my geeky, uh, you know. We, everybody's got a soft geek underbelly somewhere. My, my geeky due diligence, and um, so I was watching one of those videos that puts the scale of the universe into perspective. Aren't they good? They're good. And the thing that caught my attention was that when they got done, you know, showing you the size of the planets and all these other things and black holes and all that stuff, but it was saying that there's supposedly the thought is that there's going to be a point where nothing will exist. Everything is just going to go like a black hole is just going to swallow everything up. But will time still exist even when there's nothing, no, no molecules, no dark matter, none of that? Will yeah. time still move forward? That's a great question. So there's a point in the future where everything is gone. Basically, okay. Uh, it, it will, we we reduce to base particles. The black holes will evaporate, and there's no source of energy to drive any action or phenomenon or events. Okay, so you can ask, what happens to time? Well, what is time to us? It's it's a measurement mm -hmm. of an interval between two events. We measure that, and we call that time. What are we using to measure it? We're using like a watch that you wound up or there's a battery. Something is repeating. There's a vib in, in the limit, there's the vibrating atom from the atomic cesium clock, but something mm. is repeating. The, the, the sweep second hand repeats, the, the, the crystals in your digital watch vibrate. Mm -hmm. In a future where nothing vibrates and nothing repeats and nothing goes back on itself, the concept of the measurement of time would have no meaning. But you'd still be able to say from your view that one thing happened after another thing. So you can sequence things, but you wouldn't be able to measure any interval of quote time that would occur between them. Hmm. So just, because every time you measure time, you're using something that vibrates or repeats or has a rhythm to it. Right. Is it the rotating earth, earth around the sun? You measure days, years, months, seconds, moments, heartbeats. It's repeating. Mm. Take away all repeating phenomena in the universe, you have no way to measure time. Wow. You, you, you have a quote in this book, and I'm going to destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that in advance, but it, what you're talking about. You know the book is sitting right in front of you. It, but, but I ain't going to find the quote. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 Was somebody buy the book? Some stickies. Okay, some yellow so, stickies. Would rather uh, mess it up. I didn't. No, I didn't, no, didn't want to mess it up. Somebody buy this boy some stickies. Sticky, okay. I mean, okay. All right. Man. So, so it was. <laughs> I, C F T. Albert, I'm not gonna find no, that. No, no, I'll find. Go, go ahead. Uh, Albert go ahead. Einstein uh -huh. said, uh, "Those who believe in physics." Um, what was it? Well, people who believe in physics know that the distinct the distinction between the past, the present, and the future are stubbornly, passionately passionate illusions 
So I'm, I blew it, but it's it in your book. Good, oh, okay, so yeah, you did okay. Thank you. And it made you. sense, though. You, you I got did it. okay. Thank so you, that, he said you did so okay. let me <laughs> let me offer a quote of my own, and okay. then I'll get into the Einstein quote. Okay. So we are prisoners of the present, forever transitioning between our inaccessible past and our unknowable future. Mm-hmm. With Einstein, because so. You have a past and a present and a future, but someone else in motion in the universe, their reckoning of that timeline can and will be different from yours. So what feels like absolute understanding of the world through your perspective, someone else will completely disagree with that and they will be perfectly legitimate in doing so. So the it's not so much an illusion that's a good word to get you riled. It's just your point of view. And what relativity tells you is there's a limit to how much you can or should invest in your own point of view when you're trying to talk to somebody else about their point of view. Mm. There's a lot to learn from that even. I mean, just culturally and socially. Mm, yeah, this is good for Drake and Joe Budden. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 so just because you have a reality that you embrace, uh, it might not be an objective reality that then would apply to others. So be be humble enough about that. I love this, man. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is hanging out with us. Wait, wait, and, and on, on social on. media? Yes. On social media, if you express an opinion... People jump all over it. And I'm, in, in the day, am I am I overthinking this in the past? If you had an opinion that differed from someone else, oh, tell me more. Oh, why do you think that way? I think this. Yeah. Okay, now let's go have a beer. It was ex- an exchange. An exchange. That is not what's happening today. Sure. Mm-hmm. Today, you put out an opinion. People attack it. Uh. And I say to myself, are you attacking it because you want everyone else to have exactly your same opinion? That's a different society. Okay, that's a dictatorship with one doctrine, all right? And everybody is the same. Mm -hmm. Part of what makes this country beautiful is that which is beautiful is beautiful. It's so many different people are here and they all got different views and we can celebrate that, not try to homogenize it. Oh man. Mike, you wanna jump in here? You like this guy? (laughs) Oh, I love this This guy. This guy's amazing, right? I'm so happy he said what he said about social media. And I think it's really, it's not even, <laughs> I the, hate the social media. The cesspool that yeah. is social media. It's not even so much about the opinions in the in the perspective of what you're talking about. And the, the reason why it fails them is because they're looking for virality. They're looking to go viral. They're looking for a moment. They're looking to get the clicks and the likes up. So even their statement isn't rooted in sound facts and data, which they know. Um, I love how you said illusion. Well, that's that giving them credit. So, yeah. that I don't know that everyone would, but what you're saying is they know better, but they just want they want, it's they want the bank. likes. It's different. It's celebrity is different. Bank. Everyone can be a celebrity now, yeah, right? Everyone yeah. can have mm-hmm. a platform and a microphone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, DeGrasse Tyson is here. I'm open up the phone lines. 888-742-3345. Oh, nice. Anything about the universe, mm. you can ask him. Try to stump him. Mm. Uh, <laughs> anything. Are, are, are we, because of our challenges with gravity and our constant quest to escape the planet Earth, Uh huh. are we really in actuality prisoners of this planet okay very good question so this book to infinity and beyond is all about that it's all about what was going on we were standing on earth flat-footed looking up and saying, i want to go to the moon if it's 400 years ago how would you do that mm-hmm. how is it do you do you you have sailing vessels that go the ocean is there a sailing vessel that can move through the air and take you to the moon. Well, not really. Icarus tried it, built wings, and they melted. <laughs> got mm. too close to the sun. I got too close to the sun. So do you give up, or do you say, I'm going to still try this. I'm just not going to make my wings out of wax. Mm-hmm. right? So you build on other mistakes. So this is an ascent. Yes. The quest to understand all that which is above our head, literally and figuratively, is <laughs> an extraordinary journey that we made mm. from the first aeronauts people who figured out that hot air can rise you can make a balloon you know the first aeronauts was a a sheep a duck and a chicken okay so the people knew better they're not going to send their own ass (laughs) i I, 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 I don't feel bad for the sheep because if the balloon failed at least the duck and the chicken have a chance of landing smoothly right right? (laughs) not the sheep but but anyway you take this we've been to the moon but our minds and our robotic emissaries have been beyond that 
And currently we're wondering, are there other universes? So there's no end, that's why it's infinity and beyond. There's no end to this. Wow. Are, is there any proof that, um, you know, we've been seeing these, my case when I bring this up too, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. But why do you suppose we're hearing all this UFO conversation right now? I I, I, I I don't joke with it no more. I used to joke about it until you came here and said, show me the body. No, they, so they put the bodies out in Mexico. It's great. I are love those, it. Are those real? I don't know if they're real, but it's that's better than what the dude did in our Congress because that was the Mexican Congress. Dude did. He said, "I got aliens, but they're in a locked box, and no one can see it." That's not helpful. Okay, <laughs> so I, I that's not how science works. When we brought moon rocks back from the moon, it was shared with all the laboratories of the world. Yeah, here's something we found. You all investigate it. We'll do our test and we'll compare. Okay? So that's how science works. It's not one person giving one result, especially if it's an extraordinary result. You need verification. That is how you would establish an objective truth in this world. A scientific result gets tested by others, even competitors. And when they all get about the same answer, you say, we got a new truth on our hands. So send them alien body to scoop out some of its flesh Send it around to biophysicists around the world. <laughs> then maybe they're real. I, I, I'm skeptical, but that's normal. We, okay? So, yeah. And all the, the fuzzy things in the sky. Do you know how, do you know, a, a, say it with me, a billion photos are uploaded to the internet every day taken by a smartphone in the high resolution, high resolution camera, a, a, a video, and, a, and none of them are aliens. They're fuzzy things in the sky. But we have, Perfect images of each other. <laughs> a million people are airborne at any given moment with a window right next to them. Don't you think if the mothership showed up, somebody would have a picture of that in higher resolution than just fuzzy <laughs> lights across the sky? So maybe all these fuzzy lights are aliens. And then I, I posted this. People didn't appreciate it. I said, <laughs> I, I said, no, here's what I said. Here's what I said. No, here, stay with me. Stay with me. Okay. I said, <clears throat> maybe. Aliens are actually fuzzy. <laughs> well, and they have a special affection for the U.S. Navy. Okay? <laughs> that would explain everything. All of the fuzz. <laughs> okay. I have a know? baby Wait, geek question. Where are you coming? Okay. So, oh, baby geek. We've been, it is baby geek because I'm not a geek person at all, but do the clocks have to go back this year? Yeah, so <laughs> that is a baby. <laughs> it is baby because first they said they didn't, then they yeah, said they did. Tell, yeah. tell us. Yeah, I, you know, I could take or leave daylight saving time. Mm. I don't, you know, I. You, my, my wife is from Alaska. Just think this yeah, through. Okay. She's yeah. from Alaska. The farther away from the equator you go, towards either of the poles, the bigger is the time difference between sunset in the winter and sunset in the summer. So in other words, if you're on the equator, it's 12 hours a day, 12 hours of night, every day of the year, okay? Mm -hmm. As you go towards the poles, the hours of sunlight in the summer get longer and longer and the hours of darkness in the winter get longer and longer. So, the, so your relationship to the sun is way wider than any one hour, hour. shift would ever matter to you. Okay, so another, my wife went to school in the dark in the winter. Wow. The sun would rise at like 10.30 yeah. and set at like 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> what is shifting one hour going to do for you? Nothing. Okay, <laughs> so it's, a, I, it's an interesting gesture. Mm -hmm. It's a, a tip towards when we needed sunlight to illuminate the end of the day. Think about it. We've only had electricity for 110 years. Yeah. Mm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. After before that we were burning some kind of fuel, yeah. be it whale oil or candles inside the and so they said, Well, let's put some extra sunlight in the evening. But then you ask yourself, why do that in the summer and not in the winter when you actually need the extra sunlight more? So I don't I, I'm not a I'm not gonna launch a movement, but if they're gonna get rid of it, I you, they'll get no complaint from me. There you go. Uh man, doctor. Mm -hmm. doctor. Oh, by the way, one yes. other thing. Yes. If you're ever writing uh Eastern Daylight Time, Eastern Standard Time. Just don't. Just say E.T. E.T. Yeah, yeah. I get that, man. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, that way, whether it's Daylight Time or Standard Time, 
your time you give is correct if you know what the time is. Nobody remembers when the clocks switch over anymore. So just say e Eastern Time, e e T C T P T yeah. uh, M T. That's all. Leave out the middle. Most of the time you'll get it wrong when you're near the transition. But you, you know what time of day you're going to have lunch, okay? You're not going to be confused. Everybody knows when to switch the clocks. And if you switch the clock uh, before, during, or after, you just say E.T., it works. Man. Wow. All right, man. Dr. This Neil deGrasse Tyson is here. A new book to infinity and beyond. And beyond. A journey of cosmic oh, by the discovery. Way, this book. This, oh, sorry. I keep hitting no, the no, table. No, no, I shouldn't no, no. hit the table. It hits L the microphone. Lindsay. Oh, Lindsay Nix Walker. Yes. She's a longtime um, producer of the my podcast, Star Talk. Oh, I love Star Talk. So this, this is the third book in the collaboration of my podcast with National Geographic. She's a longtime producer. She was editor of the previous Star Talk book. It says, time to make this woman co-author. Yeah. And so she's very um, uh, enthusiastic. She cut her teeth as a as a... People still say cut their teeth. Yeah, they understand well, that. We yeah. know what you meant. No, I said to someone they didn't know what I was talking about. Yeah, well, how no. old are how old were they? Yeah, we're young. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. yeah. So, they cut their teeth on. Um, she used to uh, cut yeah, teeth. she was a journalist okay. on uh, and wrote on biology and exobiology for NASA. So she's got good science chops, good. And so she came in and we, we co-wrote this. And so I was delighted beautiful, to have Beautiful, beautiful book, man. Make sure you get this book. We got a lot of callers. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. let's do it. All yeah, right, sorry, let's do it. Sorry, I don't want to take uh, all the time. No, 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 no. Mike, go ahead real quick. Let me get Mike and Tracy here real quick, real quick. Yeah, I think that science is having such a great moment right now. And so I'm just curious, like, what gets you up in the morning? What are you curious to study and discover? It can be more than one thing. It doesn't mean the thing. Uh, can I answer a different question? Like, what sure. keeps me awake at night? I said get up in the morning. Okay. What, are you, what are you excited for? <laughs> oh, right? No, but, but I want to tell you what keeps me awake at night. Can you answer what gets you up in the morning, too? Uh, okay, do I'll do both. both. I'll Thank do both. You. Okay, what keeps me awake at night is <laughs> wondering whether the human mind is smart enough to even answer the questions we've posed mm -hmm. or worse yet are we smart enough to even know what questions to ask uh. so what gets me up in the morning is applying my intellect to unsolved problems my intellect built on the efforts of generations of scientists before me and I wonder is it sufficient how clever do I have to be to get to the bottom of what nature is trying to reveal to us. Mm -hmm. We don't know dark matter. We don't know what dark energy, we can measure it, we don't know what they're made of. We don't know what was around before the Big Bang. Where there's a profound, we don't know how we went from organic molecules to self-replicating life on Earth. These, for me, are the four most profound questions that science confronts today, and the frontier of science. There's other science, like the next round of medicines and this sort of thing, that's gotta happen regardless. But yeah, I, I want to know what quantum computing will do for us mm. once that uh, once that hits the you know uh, comes in the house. Yeah, I ain't gonna never get sleep knowing what worries you. <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard it's gonna be for us. And I'm to not sleep. as worried about AI. I'm not as worried as some other people are. I think we'll keep it in check. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so many powerful weaponry that we've developed in the past. Yes, it does damage, and then sane heads prevail. And uh, you know what? Uh, um, who's that science fiction writer? Ray Bradbury. Mm -hmm. When asked, um, why do you write these futures that are so bleak? Is this what you think we, we will confront? Mm. And he said, no, I don't write them because I think that's what will happen to us. I write them so you will know to avoid them. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wow. So maybe movies like The Matrix uh -huh. and Terminator, Terminator Back thank to the you. Future. Come on, um, baby. Maybe that is, these are, it's writers mm. giving us a lesson. There it is. Cautionary And how tales. to become b wiser shepherds of the powers that we wield. Huh. I like that, man. Tracy, jump in there, so, too. So, Neil, to give you um, a made-up scenario, right? Let's just say that reincarnation is the destiny of our lives after death. But you are able to well, choose. That's not necessary if we figure out why we age at all and then you'd never die. Okay. So that would render reincarnation obsolete. Dang. Well, let's the, just say all of that doesn't happen and okay, reincarnation okay. is still present. Just, just keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. There are things that can happen that render the previous concern completely irrelevant. Mm. Like there are people who are worried about the buildup of manure in the streets of Manhattan. 110, 
10 years ago, 120 years ago. How, what are you going to do? And it flies went in it, and all the street vendors that sold fish and other food, because there were no supermarkets back then, the flies, it was, a, it, was a, it was a health nightmare. And they're trying to think, well, what do we feed the horse so it doesn't poop so much? Or what do we feed it so flies don't reproduce? And it, brilliant people are trying to solve that problem, and the actual solution was the car. The car. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Just, all right. So now. Thank you. Okay, so, so reincarnation. Say, yes. We're sticking with your scenario. Thank you. You know, just, let's just assume that divine intelligence stumps us and reincarnation still happens. But you get the opportunity to choose either to come back as a human again or mm -hmm. to come back as another living organism. Plant kingdom, animal kingdom, in between. Which one would you do? Oh, I'm, I'm so familiar with what it is to be human. I wouldn't trade it for other animals, especially since the life of other animals is basically in our hands. Uh, I don't. <clears throat> I don't want my True. life to be subject to the whims of another species, mm. uh, and so yeah. No, I'd come back as a human, and I'd come back in the future. I wouldn't like go to the past if time travel was part of the reincarnation okay. package. Do you believe that humans are of the higher intelligence? I, I think we're living? more intelligent than other than all other creatures that have ever existed. But then, who decided that? Man, right. we right. did. <laughs> So would aliens say that about us? Right. Okay. Here, I got a, a quick story here. I know you got a, agendas <laughs> no, no, here. No, no, no. I just want to get good? the call. We good? Nah. We good? Okay. You're good. You're good. You ready? I remember being in school mm -hmm. and elementary school. And I'm an old fart. Okay. And so the teacher says, uh, humans are the peak of the evolutionary ladder. This right. was back when this is how they were talking. And... Well, do we have the biggest brain? Well, no, we don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. so we don't. Okay, uh, whales, elephants, and porpoises have bigger brains. Okay, so it can't be that. So, oh, if you take the ratio of the weight of your body and the weight of your brain, we do better than all other animals. This is what I was taught. That's what you was taught. So yeah. that's how they. So your brain to the body <laughs> that you're controlling would we do good? Okay. Mm -hmm. I would <laughs> later learn that that's not even true. Mm. That's only true for mammals. And even at that, we are just a little bit higher than mice in the weight of our brain relative to the weight of our body. Just a little bit higher than mice. So we're not, it's not a runaway, hands down thing. But you know who has a way bigger, well, who has a bigger brain to body weight ratio? Are mid sized birds, mm -hmm. like crows, mm. eagles. Um, uh, uh, owls, the mm -hmm. mid-sized birds have a higher brain to body. Plus, their bodies don't weigh much because they fly, right. and their bones are hollow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so th so they have a brain and a and a body that doesn't weigh all that much. But they don't win the category. You know who wins it? Are certain species of ants. ants. Yeah. Ants, and then you think about it, and say, "Yeah, you're right. Look at that big old head they're carrying around at the front of their body. <laughs> that big old head. That's... So for some ants, their brain is 20 percent their body weight. Wow. Heather, this is why I watch National Geographic. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, that just, they don't they get on me about okay. that. Okay, you're not explaining it that way. Let the man get his fix. Telling Sweet. us to watch whatever you want to watch. Thank you. Mike. Let the man. You're thank you. Let the man watch what he got to watch. So now watch. So. So I'm thinking, if aliens mm -hmm. want, if the aliens are into brains, then we would not be their first object of interest here. Right. If they're into brains, they'll talk to the whales first, and they'll know how to. If they're smarter, they'll know how to talk to whales. Whales talk to each other. Right. Like, can we turn? Okay. Uh, they'll talk to the whales, then the elephants, then the dolphins, uh, then the ants, yes. and then maybe the mice, and then we maybe we're fifth. <laughs> okay, that's how. We're fifth. We're top oh, five, though. By, by the way, all that was in my <laughs> previous book. Yeah, I ain't been in here in two years. It's been and a while. Man. You don't write. You that, don't. That's not true. Text. That's ah. not true. Where? No, the book. I before, watch you. The book before this one was yeah. called Starry Messenger: Cosmic Perspectives on Civilization. This is every. This is what we look like when you come from out there. Yeah. And th this brain conversation, this brain thing, and the and the aliens. That's in that book. Just to, just so before you get too big egoed about your life, right? That is. And why is it that we <laughs> measure how smart an animal is by how well it can do, like chimpanzees, how well they can do sign, sign language, language, language yeah. and things? Mm -hmm. We measure how smart they are by how well they can talk to us, yes. Rather than measure how smart we are by how well we can talk to them. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs>
Come on, man. Let me get to these phone calls yeah, to Neil really deGrasse Tyson. He's on the road. He's flowing. Keep flowing. Throw a beat on underneath this dude. He's dropping bars. Sway don't Come bring on. back the same information when he watched these shows. That's true. Go ahead. I try, to, I try to say it just goes over the head. <laughs> Shut up, Ooh, that, He just dissed y'all. Okay. Uh, don't listen to that's why you're at this other they end, they end of the table. Never Because you come upside his head any time you could. That's why it's distance. <laughs> you know about distance. <laughs> All right, we got Isaac on the line from Illinois. Welcome Sir to the Isaac, show. What's All right, hey, Isaac. Isaac, go for it. Hey. Uh, hey, I'm a 12-year-old. And I want to know, how does the universe expand with gravity? He's 12. Oh, excellent. Hey, thanks for having that, those kind ah. of thoughts. Mm -hmm. If you're having those kind of thoughts, are you building something in your basement that your parents don't know about? <laughs> I'm just checking. Possibly. <laughs> <Is it> possibly. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Maybe. No My snitching, Neil. No snitching, Neil. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, cool. uh, he needs to finish the equation. So he just needs that there you go. Piece. He still he needs some extra data. <laughs> yeah. So, so the universe is expanding, even though the collective gravity of all the galaxies is trying to slow that down. And it turns out there's this other pressure in the vacuum of space that we discovered now 25 years ago, and a Nobel Prize was awarded for it. It's called dark energy. Let me say that better, dark energy. It is a pressure in the vacuum of space operating as an anti-gravity force that is making the expansion of the universe accelerate. And gravity is helpless in the presence of this force. And we do not know what's causing it, but we can measure that it's there. So, yeah, gravity is trying, but it's failing. Mm. Okay, Isaac. Hey, man, you're a super citizen, Isaac. <laughs> hey, remember, we're on your team. All right? Yeah, no! Yeah, yeah. 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 I love you, Isaac. Yeah. Uh, call his school. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you. Him. Check his backpack. <laughs> 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 that sounds scary. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, hey, Sharitha's on the line from Bakersfield. Sharitha, go ahead, Sharitha. Hey, we Sharitha. love you, Isaac. Sorry. Hello? Sharitha, you there? Sharitha. Sharitha, bud. Yeah, I'm here. Go for it. Uh, say hi to Neil deGrasse Tyson. You got a question? Yeah, hi. My question is, do you believe that the universe has something to do with um, the laws of attraction like thoughts are things? Okay, so so this whole con thanks for that question. This whole notion of laws of attraction mm -hmm. uh, that came out when we finally understood magnets. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they talk about animal magnetism, where do you attract it to someone? And then chemistry reached high levels and say, what's the chemistry between you? Mm -hmm. We started using these sciency words to describe whether you like somebody or not. Mm -hmm. And but I'm not convinced that the physics, the chemistry, matter when people decide who they like and who they don't like. Uh, especially since half of all marriages end in divorce. Talk about <laughs> it. So there can't be anything <laughs> fundamental about what attracted you in the first place, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> and there are people who hate each other and end up liking each other. Right. So I'm, whereas magnets, the North Pole will always stick to the South Pole yeah. no matter what. So I'm, I will, I'm not go, I'm, I'm talking I, I'm about not like gonna bring, I'm, I'm not gonna bring the, the, the science vocabulary into the very complex dynamics of human interpersonal affairs. Okay, Sharita? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, you're a citizen. Hey, Sharita, <laughs> get his book. It's a great book, right. by the way. All right, you're a citizen. Yeah, I love something else. In, in, in the bit book, you, 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 go in, you talk about time travel. Mm. Oh, by the way, all those places where we, there's a subject that where a movie tried to deal with that subject. Yeah, I I, I talk about that movie. That's, That's like it's like the scenery along the journey. So good. of this book. Did they get it right? Did they get it wrong? Yeah, and that's the pop culture dimension of it. Because my podcast Star Talk has three DNA strands, if I may. <laughs> yes, but one of them is science. Another one is pop culture, mm -hmm. and the third is humor. And we find that if you make it relevant by referencing pop culture, and person, a person smiles mm -hmm. for having encountered it, that they come back for more. Yes. That's what we try to do. Absolutely. <laughs> so what? Are, so is time travel possible? Well, I mean, travel is possible through time zones, but can we travel? <laughs> <laughs> can we well, travel? Wait. I'll tell you something interesting about time zones. <laughs> yeah. You know, time zones, and get me back on track after okay, I say that. I got that. you. So time zones are these lines of longitude on Earth, mm -hmm. like orange slices, right? Mm -hmm. And it's 24 time zones, with right. a little more because some... Some folks do half hour time zone, 
why oh, right. don't True. get me started yeah. that's so unnecessary but all right so there it is but wait a minute all these lines of longitude merge at the pole well if lines of longitude separate time zones then what time is it at the, the poles mm. the question has no meaning on earth the question has no meaning correct on earth. because there's there is no time because all time zones meet so there, there can be no time as we reckon it everywhere else on earth so santa has no time that he doesn't have a clock he doesn't he doesn't uh, hold, hold a rolex or nothing <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got a rolex after all these years of work ah, so time travel away rolexes, he ain't stole one why. of those presents ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he makes the presents <laughs> he makes the presents okay oh another little thing about santa anytime they show him in his in his in his slate uh, no no in his <laughs> the house workshop. the oh, factory workshop. yeah, yeah workshop, the, the workshop oh yes, yes um they'll show trees <laughs> around there and the mountains in the background the north pole is not on land it's on it's a floating ice glacier but it, it, no, well, it's, no, no, no. glaciers would be on land okay it's ice i there is no land there so what wherever it's sand is making it it's on an ice flow for now until all that ice melts, mm. then Santa. <laughs> hey kids! <laughs> well, wait, wait, Santa. Uh, Dude is ruining Santa's everything. Santa's dressed in winter clothes. Yeah. Happy holidays! If, if this global warming stuff keeps up, he's gonna be in bathing suit delivering presents. That's Santa's a great gonna, new book. Santa, oh, gonna, Santa in a bathing suit. Santa Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> Oh, 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 got a visual. Kill, can't, can't get that out. Neil, the, Neil got a visual. Get no, that hot no, red. Wait, 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 so let me finish out. So, <laughs> if you want to go back in time, uh, no. So, so you can go forward in time. Einstein mm -hmm. relativity fully embraces that. Okay, either by traveling fast, or or sending someone else to a high gravity field, and their time will go more slowly compared to you. They showed this in the movie Interstellar. Interstellar. Yeah. The boys went down to the uh, 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 black hole planet, and they were down there for like 20 minutes, but the guy up in the ship aged 10, 20 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the relativity of time. That was also the best example of a black hole I, I read as well, right? The interstellar black hole. That you know why? Because the co-executive producer is named Kip Thorne, who is an astrophysicist specializing mm -hmm. in cosmology, has written books on the subject, and he won the Nobel Prize for dis the discovery of colliding black holes in the universe. Damn. So that's the man you want at that level doing that movie. Uh, mm. But they also deal with time travel in Interstellar at the end. Oh, at the end. So th then they, they step places where right where we're not a where little the, too fantastical little, the physics is a little fuzzy <laughs> yeah yeah so if it's fuzzy, it's fuzzy. then fuzzy you, know, again. you go there it's those aliens. but but i guess christopher nolan directed that and he also did oppenheimer <laughs> yep okay my guy. so nolan my he, me nolan well i had him a guest on my podcast he, <gasps> my boy's got a got a geek belly like there's none other Oh, I gotta listen belly. to that. So, oh, yeah. so what about? Oh, travel? by the way, I Barbie Heimered. Not that you ask. I'm dead. Oh, nice. Yeah, I saw <laughs> both movies the same day. <laughs> mm. You gotta get ready. You, you gotta be mentally right. ready for that. Yeah. Yo, first of all. <laughs> I love that you're having. I feel like you're having a great time mm -hmm. up here. That's just uh, what I always yeah. wanted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but you don't uh, want to be able to travel back in time because that's dangerous. Mm. And and Hawking. Uh, obviously, Butterfly before effect. he died, suggested we might one day discover a time travel conjecture. Okay, where we learn that you cannot travel backwards in time because you then alter the present from which you came. Yeah. So if you go back in time and prevent your parents from meeting one another, you don't have to kill them. That's unnecessary. Okay. <laughs> Just prevent them meeting, but then you're never born. You can interrupt them having sex so that they have sex 10 minutes later then a different sperm fertilizes the egg mm -hmm. and someone else other than you were born mm -hmm. there are a lot of ways you could do the terminator scenario without killing everybody okay so if you think <laughs> that's <sperminator>. through <laughs> the okay, sperminator <laughs> Good one. <laughs> good one. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a good one. So, but, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yes. So, you can, so here's the problem. If you go back in time, prevent your parents from meeting each other, then you're never born so that you don't exist to go back in time right. to prevent them from meeting each other. So this is very paradoxical in that regard. Yes. But the way I think about it is, let's say you, let's say you are, um, your friend is walking down a corridor, and they slip on a banana peel and fall. 
Let's just say that happens, all right? And you want to prevent that. And so there's a new texting service that can send text backwards in time in this new universe. And right. you send a text, and you go backwards in time to your friends say, watch out for the banana peel. Okay, so what happens? The person is walking down the corridor, the text buzzes, and they read it, it says, watch out for the banana peel, and they read that at the same time they slip on the banana peel because they weren't paying attention to their thing because you made them not pay attention. It's like the Matrix with the cookie. <laughs> yeah. that's Still funny, happens. Like, no, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. it could be that your attempt to interfere with the past is what made the present the reality that you came yeah. from in the first place. And that's where we can conclude our lecture today, Woo! our lecture hall by the one and only Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yay! Oh Man, it's not enough time for it's you, brother. Enough. By the way, my yeah. book a year ago when you didn't call me, that book has a chapter. You can't change the past, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Okay. No, uh, the, the chapters in that book, because it's about civilization, it, there's a chapter on color and race, uh -huh. gender and identity, law and order, uh, uh, life and death. Body and mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's all these subjects that we've all thought about over Thanksgiving dinner with crazy uncles and, and aunts, mm -hmm. yet it's a cosmic perspective on that in an attempt to just level the playing field for all conversation. That, that came out just a year ago. Um, yep. Uh, yeah, you came here, you did everybody's show but ours. Ooh, ooh, I recall ooh, that. Ooh. I didn't want to bring that up. No! I didn't want to go back into time. Hey. <laughs> Speak on it. Conjecture. 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 <laughs> Maybe if you had came that time, you wouldn't be here yeah. today. Yeah. Oh! 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 Never know, man. I'm just saying. Oh! But what we can celebrate oh. is that you're here in the present. Yeah. Right. And yeah. we appreciate you every time you come here. We appreciate it. That's right. I see you've been going to the gym. Keep that going. You look good. Thank I'm you, bro. Okay. Thank you, man. <laughs> All right. You're the best. I man. used to wrestle, so I know male bodies. I yeah. know when you're doing That's something with your body. Wow. He told you he was going to the gym? No, he didn't have to. I told him. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. You felt it? No, no I didn't touch it? I touched no, felt no, it. Right. No, no, no. Tracy. No, no. Energetically. Hey. No, no. I, the cosmos. I wrestled for he, 10 he, years. Yeah. He, okay, he I was captain of my high school wrestling oh, right. team. And before that, you were rowing. At I also rowed. At and and I, right? I danced, too. And, and yeah. I, but, but what I'm saying is I know bodies. Yeah. And I know when, when the bodies are a little more gaunt, the cheeks and the throat, and how people walk, how they hold themselves, how, yeah. how, all of that. And so I knew immediately when I last saw you, when last time I came through and I was not on your show, <laughs> uh, you came out in the, out the whole corridor and I saw you. Yeah. Wow. So stay in shape. Stay, 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 Ooh, I'm, going for it. I'm going to the gym today. There you Just go. Just because you said that. Yuck! <laughs> hey, man, love you, brother. Yes. Oh, God, you all well, you. man. Love on, you, man. All, all, fifth, right. all 15 of you all in right. this space. Touch the square feet. We'll be back tomorrow.